so this is part two from the same your question number 59 from uh, this question panel and it has four parts actually one part we did like share based payment in last lesson and uh, this is coming now um, all of them are related to deferred tax so let's read this part it says that panel is leasing plant over a five year period five year period which is more than one year a right of use asset was recorded at the present value of the lease payment of 12 million at the inception of the lease which was 1st November 2004. So when you begin the lease, you took it for five years because it was a five year plant and it has a value, it, it is a big value. So you considered it as a lease, the company panel company considered it as a lease, not as a contract and they created a right of use asset. And you know that right of use asset, this 12 million, you measure it as the present value of whatever future payments, etc. So we'll discuss that later. The right of use asset is depreciated on a straight line basis over the five years. So in their IFRS books, they considered it as a lease. They recorded it as asset and they decided to depreciate for over five years on straight line basis. So 12 million divided by five, I think 2.4 million should be depreciation per year. The annual lease payment are 3 million payable in arrears on 31st October and the effective interest rate is 8% per annum. Okay, so lease payments are 3 million. Of course, that 3 million includes, so it is lease rentals, it is principal and interest together. Because if you consider that, you know, five, five times you have to pay 3 million, so actually you are going to pay 3 million, 3 million, 3 million, 3 million, 3 million, which is total 15, but you have to find out the present value of that to consider your lease liability. So the directors have not leased an asset before and are unsure as to its treatment for deferred taxation. The company can claim tax reduction for the annual rent payment as the lease does not qualify for tax relief. As the lease does not qualify for tax relief. Now, there is a, now here comes a, a little bit of contradiction because you are considering it as a lease and you are considering it as right of use asset, but the tax authorities are not taking it as your asset the tax authorities are saying that in your income statement, you will be treating it as a rental payment, annual rental payment, which is 3 million. So what is going to happen that in our IFRS books, in our IFRS books, we consider it as an asset, we consider it as an asset and we charge our depreciation, which is 2.4 million. Whereas in the textbooks, in the textbooks, you will be charging not the depreciation, but they are taking the lease rentals and the lease rentals are 3 million. Now, because of that thing, your you know, right of use asset, the value of asset and value of liability is going to change. Because in the beginning, you have 12 million right of use asset and there is 12 million right of use, uh, I'm sorry, there is a 12 million of lease liability. So both things are same in the in the beginning. But what will happen end of year one, you would say that in IFRS books, my carrying amount will become the asset will be decreased by depreciation and the carrying amount of the asset will become 9.6 million. Whereas in the textbooks, you had a liability of 12 million out of which 3 million you paid out so the tax base of the liability will be 9 million. So this is your tax base of the asset and this is the tax base of the liability. And because there is a difference of 0 0.6, which I can say like 600,000. So 600,000 is the difference and that 600,000 difference will definitely give rise to a temporary difference and multiplied it 600,000 multiplied by whatever it is. Uh, there is one more thing which we, I am just ignoring because what you need to do that you need to 
have this 8% of lease liability as well. You have to inflate the liability because this is at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, you have your opening liability is 12 million, but you have 8%. 8% comes out to be how much? Can somebody tell me 12 million into 8% is how much? 12 times 8 is 96, 0 0.96, right? 0 0.96. And then from 0 0.96, I subtract three. So how much it makes? Can somebody make a quick calculation? 12.96 minus three, 9.96. Okay. Then 9.96 and 9.6, the difference. The difference comes out to be 0 0.36 which means that 360,000 is the difference. And that 360,000 multiplied by your taxes, 30% for this question, and 360,000 into 30%. So 360,000 into 30%, 360,000 into 30%. So this should be 108, 108,000. Now, this is going to be the deferred tax. This is going to be the temporary difference. So 108,000, is it going to be a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability? Can somebody tell me? 108,000 is the difference. Is it going to be deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability? You asset. should always see what is the carrying base here. If the carrying base is less, in this case, the carrying base is less, it is going to be an asset. So this is going to be an asset. Elisa, can you explain if the carrying base is less, why is it an asset? Logically, can you explain us? Instead of remembering, we want to understand. Uh, the way I understand is that the carrying amount uh, of accounting base is less than tax base because we uh, decrease more from accounting perspective than from tax perspective. Okay. From accounting perspective, we decrease 2.4 million. From tax perspective, we decrease 2.040 million. So there is a difference of 360,000 between accounting deduction and the tax deduction. So the uh, 360,000 difference and this 30% will be deferred tax assets. So we have assets for the next year to decrease. Oh. Okay. I understand, but not very well. I want you to explain it again, logically, step by step. I said that, listen, this is always very important to understand. Let's say that we make a rule here. And by the way, I will do this question again. I will write down, I will type the full answer. I'm not answering the question. I'm just discussing the question now. So don't think that this is the solution. I will write down everything properly, how you should write it. Here I'm just discussing the question with you so that we never forget it. So we say that let's first decide the rule. We learned it before, but we do it again. We say that if the carrying value and carrying value means net book value, carrying value, carrying value means your net book value. It means your IFRS books. Okay. So if the carrying value is more than the tax base, what do you have? You have deferred tax liability. You have to remember this rule. First you remember and then we will learn. And opposite of that, we say that if the carrying value is less than the tax base, you have deferred tax asset. So I'm just writing it down so that we know what is the rule. So this is what you can remember. And in our case, because the carrying value, this is the IFRS carrying value, it is less. And therefore, we have a deferred tax asset. Now, the question is that why it is an asset logically? Listen, how you should, how I see it, there is always a different way of 
seeing the numbers how i see it i can see it for the future i can see it for the present let's think i'm talking about until now what has happened i'm not going to speak about what will happen in future i can explain you this concept with both perspective what has happened so far or what will happen in future what has happened so far what happened so far which mean until today when you have this situation that your book value and your tax base are not equal your book value is 9.6 your tax base is 9.96 so it looks like that the company charged more depreciation right that's why the book value is less why the book value is less because the company has charged more depreciation more depreciation means less profit or i should say that it looks like that ifrs depreciation is more not like the company charged ifrs depreciation is more let me write it down like this so that it becomes clear ifrs depreciation is more more depreciation means less profit less profits means less taxes so ifrs tax is less ifrs tax is less but the tax department calculated more tax ifrs tax is less than ifrs tax is less than the tax department calculation since we pay taxes based on tax department calculation therefore it looks like that we paid more than what ifrs says and since we paid more therefore it is a tax asset this is how the process goes in my mind i mean this is my way of seeing the things now you might have your own way of seeing the things but i see it like this that my ifrs book value is less which means that i should i in ifrs books i have charged more depreciation more depreciation means less profit less profit means less taxes so according to ifrs i should be paying less but the tax department takes more so because i'm paying more so i will recover it i'm paying more it looks like advance payment so this is my tax asset and you can reverse this logic vice versa if this value goes up so this is the general understanding of the question now let's see how do you write it if you have to attempt this question in exam so definitely they expect from you if you see that the question in the book it is for actually um, how many marks they have given they have given four marks to this event four marks and four marks they will never give you for a very short calculation what they expect from you they expect from you that you know uh, how these these numbers before i mean not only you should give the numbers but you should be always you should also be speaking about uh, the treatment we say that uh how should i start the answer let me think like the question is related to 
IFRS 16 leases under IFRS 16 leases the entity should record this contract as a lease as it qualifies the criteria criteria under IFRS 16 the entity should record right of use asset which is the present value of uh, right of use asset Um, not so long and the lease liability which is present value of future payments initially both are same ha <sighs> ha ha the text department does not allow pre to treat it as a leased asset the text department allows to treat it as a rental contract the right of use asset will be reduced by the annual depreciation so whatever is going in my mind I'm just putting it this is you should be doing an exam whatever calculation you have in your mind you just put it down here the lease liability should <coughs> be inflated by the implicit interest rate and then decreased by the lease payments end of year values of leased of right of use asset right of use asset and lease liability should be compared any difference in the value give rise to defer tax defer tax here so i would say here opening <clears throat> value <clears throat> and here I would say right of use asset and here I have my lease liability so the opening value on both side is 12 million here and 12 million here here I would say depreciation which is 12 divided by 5 which is minus 2.4 here I would say interest on liability which is 12 into 8 percent so 12 into 0 0.08 and less lease payment and which is 3 and then you just make a total like this and you make a total like this and you should say closing balance so these are the closing balances. Uh, uh, so this is 2.0.96, 12, okay, this is minus three, sorry, minus three. So we say that difference is 9.96 minus 9.6, 9 
which is this much, 3.6, tax rate is 30%, and I will take 30% of this. So 1.108, or I can say that 108,000, okay? 108,000 is the deferred tax asset since the carrying amount is less than the tax base. This is conclusion. So this is how you should be doing it. I mean, this calculation, if you understand the logic of, of deferred tax, if you understand the logic of deferred tax, uh, then doing this calculation will take you less than three minutes. They do not want you to do three minutes because they have given you four minutes for this question, four marks. Four marks means approximately eight minutes. So you have to write something. I, m I might have written a little bit more. Maybe in exam you can write a little bit less, but you should tell that how these numbers have come in.